We are coming at you with a new series that, of course, I don't have a title for yet. Right. How about second. that horror guys? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, see, you're yeah, saying see, it. Yeah, see, I'm saying it. Oh, wow. Well, maybe, maybe we'll rally for that, I guess. But uh, by the time you're watching this, there will be a title you're reading. I just don't know what it is yet. I, I haven't thought about it. I haven't. Slashing through the snow. That's going to be it, actually. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we got that on camera. Perfect. We're, we're, let's restart it. <laughs> What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Codename Scream. I am that horror guy. And I'm Mel. And we are currently slashing through the snow. Yep, new series. You know, we've given you guys some Hydrated with Horror series. We did a found footage series. We did a sci-fi series this year. But we're at the end of the year. The most wonderful time of the year. Yes. And so, of course, there's horror related to Christmas. There's a lot of horror. There's a lot of it. There was a lot. I was really surprised when we were... Digging through things that we haven't watched, things we had watched. Yeah. And wow, like, I thought there was a lot of Thanksgiving films, and I was like, like shocked how many there were. And then I looked at this, and I'm like, damn. Yeah, there's a ton of... <laughs> I, I'm shocked by every holiday, but Christmas was like, there was like a list. Oh, yeah. And it's just hilarious, because it's definitely a slight. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so joyful, it's so happy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, by the way. Yeah. No, we're going to make it terrible. Mm -hmm. And so we picked... The, probably the most iconic to start this whole series off with, by far, I would think personally. Um, and most of you think that as well, because this did rank up there as the highest. Yep. Um, so what do we start them off with? Silent Night, Deadly Night. <laughs> which sounds like a description of a fart. <laughs> um, released November 9th, 1984. Directed by Charles E. Seller Jr. Written by Michael Hickey. Produced by Richard Bar Barmack. Scott J. Schneed or Schneid? That wasn't me messing up. That was me being. Could be either <laughs> you get, or. I'm not sure which one we're going with. <laughs> and Dennis Whitehead, which is an unfortunate last yeah, name. A couple of unfortunate names in that yeah. list there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, unfortunately for them. That's but we've got some budget box office here. Another kind of interesting, not. Not as groundbreaking. A lot less remarkable. A lot less remarkable. Kind of expected. I'm not going to lie. But there's a reason the box office was not that great. Exactly. There's some so, more to this. Yeah. But uh, $750,000 budget. This week we decided to pick films that were under a million. Yep. Unintentionally. Yep. I love how these little unintentional moments happen. And it's then, mostly the slashers. Mm -hmm. Like the old slashers were given really low budgets. Yep. But like, as we discussed in our last video, which if you haven't watched, please make sure to go ahead and check it out. Um, we did discuss the thought that that was done intentionally. These yep. directors were given lower budgets because there wasn't really much belief and backing behind this. Prove what you can do. And then when they had these killer turnarounds, yep. all right, you know what? On second thought, here's yep. a bigger budget. Sure. So, and we don't see that again nowadays. So here we are. We're <laughs> discussing this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at how that worked. But our uh, box office here was only 2.5 million. So not nearly as impressive. As the previous one. And if you were to adjust that for 2021 inflation, only 6.6 .6 million. So bring it on the low end for us. And I, I usually would like be like crapping all over this movie because it got such a low box office number. But there is a reason it got a low yep, box office number. Yeah, all, there's all. And everything's... it's not their fault. You know, we'll get to that. We're going to get bit. to that here. And I don't believe we have any critic or audience on this. No, none. At all. None. <laughs> and I'm probably probably because of everything that went into why this There's film a, a bombed. A whole big reason of everything that we will talk about. I promise this will make sense shortly. It's gonna make sense here. We're discussing things that happen in the future <laughs> now. <laughs> we haven't done it yet. We, we always we do, do this. this all the time. If you guys aren't used to this by now and are just random ramblings, yeah. And if you're new to this, sorry. Yeah, our apologies. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. This is what you're here for. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we start off in 1971. We got a five-year-old Billy watches his parents get murdered on the side of the road. And it was so sad. It was super sad. Really uncomfortable. Yeah. Super uncomfortable. Things I can't say here. This That, that wasn't the most uncomfortable part. It, no, far from it. It's a hell of a way to start a movie, though. 
So um, now Billy's afraid and terrified of Santa Claus, rightfully so, because it's a guy dressed as Santa that did it. Absolutely understandable, right? So three years later, Billy is shipped off to the orphanage, ran by Mother Superior, strict as hell, mean as hell. Scary. Scary as hell. One of the scariest parts of the movie. <laughs> a hellish being for a woman of the Lord, let me tell you. And he watches a couple of the, uh, the nuns and so forth doing their thing, and then gets his ass kicked for watching that. And then they get their asses kicked. That was, like, <laughs> one of the, like, most uncomfortable parts of the movie because it's, like, weird that that, like, triggered his trauma. So I was like, I feel like... Yeah, it was extremely uncomfortable. And then, like, how much does that have to suck to be, like, half-masked and getting your ass kicked? Yeah. By, by Mother Superior. That... It's funny that they're Catholic and you said half-mass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I a midnight just, mass. <laughs> midnight mass. <laughs> oh my! But ten years later, because this movie jumped quite a bit here mm -hmm. in a very short period of time, Billy is now eighteen years old, working at a department store, a toy store, a toy store, Iris Toys. Yep. There we go. Good on you for remember this toy store name. Okay. I'm just like I'm gonna go with a retail store. You know why I thought of it? Because when I was researching it, one of the people that worked on the movie, whose name was Ira, so I like. My mind was like, oh, pattern recognition. <laughs> so that's really the only reason. I that's guess. awesome, though. But, yeah. I like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, they make Billy become Santa Claus for the, the store, and that's not... That's a stupid. poor guy. Like, I kind of feel and bad for him at first. Shitty on the... Sorry, like, I know this is YouTube, but I'm slipping up, like, left and right here. We tonight, did it in the last I, video. We did it in the last video, too. But shitty on that employer. That is definitely something that they would have received. Like, hey, this guy's got previous traumas of such and such thing. Well, the store owner dude also has, like, some serious alcohol issues mm -hmm. happening. So, I don't think he... Yeah, no, but either way, I was like, super shitty on him to do that. Yeah. But... Billy now has all these repressed memories coming back and uh, becomes the thing that he witnessed kill his parents and proceeds to kill many a teenager throughout a town dressed as Santa Claus, yep. finding his way back to the orphanage. And uh, I'm not going to spoil the ending here. Yeah, I'm, don't. Because I feel like a lot of people haven't seen it. Yeah, these people may not have actually seen this one. This one I would understand a little bit more. People may not have seen some kind of culty and yeah. very beef style. Yeah. Um, so we'll leave that off for you guys to check this one out. There will be a link in the description below for you to check this one out for yourself and see the uh, the ending here. Because, yeah. yeah, that was kind of a sad way to end it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it, it kind of puts you in a weird place as someone watching this, too, because you don't know whether to be scared or like feel bad for the dude yeah like, even though he's doing like this awful stuff like you kind of have a heart to want to be like and i get it yeah bro. no this is like, definitely I one of those movies it. where it was hard to decipher if we were supposed to be feeling bad for him or not yeah and well i feel like it's the intention was probably not this at all but the it really shows the effects of like untreated mental illness. Yes. Basically, is like Big time. it's it's he's like the poster child mm -hmm. for it. Um, but yeah, I kind of felt bad for the dude. Oh yeah, I felt the whole film felt terrible for him, yeah. and like for me, it was just like this untreated mental illness, and then just like yeah, he went ahead and was trying to just get it out of the system yeah. and you know rid these memories. Just well, and he thought he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. He thought you he was—he doesn't know any better. Right. He's spent his life in a traumatic situation. Right. You know, whether that yeah. be, you know, getting his ass kicked in school, watching his parents get murdered. It didn't matter which way. He didn't know right. any different that violence was not okay. Yep. So you, you feel you know, like he's very human for a slasher. Yeah, definitely. Big time. Yeah. So we have some fun facts along the way. We'll throw them with you guys as well. Yeah. So this film was originally called Sleigh Ride. S L A Y, right? Nice. Um, but was changed to Silent Night, Deadly Night at the last minute. Which, even though Silent Night, Deadly Night's kind of like a pain in the rear to say, Wordy like, as it's, hell. it's a good title. Mm -hmm. It's a strong title. Um, it's better than Sleigh Ride because it's just kind of. Well, Sleigh Ride would have then pigeonholed it as like those like mid to late 80s direct to video drive in yeah. specials yep. that most people haven't watched. Yep. Or don't care to because it's a cheesy title. Yeah. 
Uh, th this is actually a funny fun fact because of an outtake that we cut out of this. Yeah, uh, yeah. it works. I think that's um, what honestly threw me off. Because the orphanage was an abandoned schoolhouse. Yep. Uh, it was renovated for the movie and then demolished soon after, which is kind of a bummer because it was like kind of a cool place. Yeah. And then they're like, we're going to make this all nice and fancy and I pretty and then we're going to destroy it. I hate when they do that, when they destroy the places after. Yeah. There's some, we discussed that in the last video as well, where it was like, it's awesome when they take the places and really just kind of embrace the right. fact that, right. yeah, we did in fact shoot this film here. So it's such a buzzkill when they just destroy the place or don't keep up with it and it falls apart. And it was such, it was just, it was, it looked so aesthetically pleasing for the film. Mm -hmm. And not just that, it was like a, seemed like a gorgeous building. It's, yeah. So, you know, why'd you do that? Yeah. If you did that, that, why you do that? Tell why, me. Why? Tell In me. the description below. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we alluded to this a little bit earlier, but this movie, uh, it wasn't its fault that it no, did so bad. not at all. Uh, so, the controversy around this film, um, I'll get into a little bit. So, the trailer initially was pulled from TV uh, after showing Santa as a murderer. Yep. Because, you know, you kids are watching TV and all of a sudden Santa's killing people. You know, I kind of get it. Yeah. Uh, but it caused such an outrage that unfortunately uh, the parents started a protest in the movie. Because apparently there were also Karens in 1984. Oh, yeah. Well, Karens, the Karens made the Karens that we have. Like, <laughs> like. So these crazy moms that could have just been happy with the trailer not being on TV anymore. They didn't have to see it anymore. They could have just stopped there. But the protest caused the movie to be pulled from the theaters just two weeks after its mm -hmm. release. Yeah. Which is a bummer. Because this would have been done so much better. Like, I mean, it did, like well over double its budget mm -hmm. which good on you but like it could have done so much it could have been much more than what it did yeah not so much of a cult status yep and uh the movie opened the same week as nightmare on elm street and it surpassed nightmare on elm street at the beginning um and what which was probably due to it was being played at twice as many theaters yeah. as nightmare was uh but the movie did fall behind significantly before it was pulled so right. it would have failed in comparison anyway, mm -hmm. but it would have, you know, probably raked in some more money. And unfortunately, it gets even worse mm -hmm. from there. So, because of the controversy surrounding the film, it made it hard for Charles Seller to find more work um, as a director, so it forced him to retire, which is a bummer. Yeah. But he uh, started focusing on producing after that. But, like, man, it, like, forced him out of a job. Right. Like, he couldn't even get work anymore because... He's just all this controversy. Yep. But that's so weird because nowadays that kind of controversy would make him even more popular. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the crazy thing. Yeah, people how, would like, want times get... have changed. They'd be like, I want this dude that caused this ruckus, you mm -hmm. know? Well, in, in the 80s, early 90s, censorship with Tipper Gore and that whole administration, yeah. they were all pushing, you know, yep. trying to rid, like, these pieces of art yep. and music. Yep. Out of existence. Mm -hmm. Because they were just afraid of it. They didn't understand it. They didn't want to. And so what better way to do it was, like, the censorship movement of the late 80s and going into the 90s was essentially the precursor to cancel culture now. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And uh, every time I think of that, I just think of Dee Snyder. Because he was, like, kind of spearheading that whole, like, mm -hmm. fight to... Not, oh, God, uh, yeah. If you look back at those interviews that he did... Like, like, and going to court. Going to and, court like, and doing stuff. it. it was, it's amazing yeah. when you yeah. go back and watch that. Yeah. And I feel like you think about it more so for music because mm -hmm. that was more what got publicized, but it was for movies, too. Oh, movies. There's a whole list. There's them still, to this day, films that are banned yeah. in certain countries. Yeah. It's just, it, you can't, I can't fathom that in this day and age that censorship still has that strong of an arm yep. in certain territories. Yep. It, it just sure blows does. my absolute mind. Yep. And, uh... Six uh, minutes of the film were actually edited out because he didn't want the film to get an X rating. I mean, it was a ween so, short of one anyway, so... But, like, just... I wish that six minutes would have been in there. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it would have been worth all of the getting pulled from theaters and stuff. And it just, like, he tried his best to, like, 
make it this certain thing so he wouldn't get into trouble. Try to fit it into this little box. And then it just all blew up in his face. Mm -hmm. And it was by a bunch of Karens. And the Karens were called the Citizens Against Movie Madness. Yeah. I.e. we don't understand a thing. I need to speak to your manager. Yeah. I'd like to speak to the manager of movies, please. Yeah. And then we'll just impose hairs on both of us. Probably not. <laughs> but you can imagine us with the hers. You know, I'm not far from it. My hair is growing out. I just gotta spike it up in the back. I'm gonna spike little, it up, blonde it out. Get a little uh, Kate Gosselin. Yeah, there it. you go. <laughs> and then I want to speak to every Starbucks manager. Yep. Because they didn't make your drink right. You got one pump instead of three. I don't drink coffee. Why is there coffee in my Starbucks? <laughs> I don't like caffeine. What? <laughs> Oh, wow. anyway. Anyways, we digress. Karen's censorship. <laughs> yeah. All shit yeah. at the end of the it day. It was just, it, the whole thing was just a really unfortunate thing that happened. And it's a bummer because there were so much more graphic movies, I feel like, at this time than this. Oh, good. Like, yeah. This was, like, kind of like on the light side as far as, like, gore and violence mm -hmm. and stuff. It's just because the Karen's were mad that it was Santa. It's because this one actually got television spots yeah. where these other movies didn't. Well, and I also feel like people that did watch the movie that were upset by it didn't like the fact that the killer was so humanized. Mm -hmm. And because if you look at all these other slashers, they're monsters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even, you know, you look at Halloween or Friday the 13th or any of those you see Jason as a monster. You see mm -hmm. Michael as the unkillable, you know, the, the shape. Exactly. You know, he's not even a person. He's just the shape. Whereas this, he was just a human. And mm -hmm. there was an emotional element to it. And it almost wasn't a horror movie. It was more like a psychological, right. you know. And we've touched based on this in a couple of videos now, previously, mm -hmm. where the difference between the big, brute, unkillable thing versus the average Joe, which one would be more frightening. Yeah. And I think... The reason that people pitched fit, besides the fact that it's humanizing it, is they would have been more afraid that this would have inspired more people because it's a more human and more realistic thing. That, in that sense, when we discuss the difference between, you know, which one scares us more, that would bother me more. The effects of a actual human, normal Joe. Right. And what that could do in real life is more right. frightening than yep. the actual on Definitely. Screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh... I don't know. I like this movie. Yeah, I absolutely. like the whole controversy things like a bummer, but um, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah, I there were parts of it that made me uncomfortable, but I feel like if a movie, even even not a horror movie, if a movie is like a psychological thriller and it doesn't make me uncomfortable at some point, it's not a good movie. Right. So um, I I liked that it, it did do that, and it 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 was more emotional than most horror yeah. movies that are just, you know, hack and slash. This, you know, I keep saying it, but bringing that human element into this was, like, a good move. It was a welcome change. Yeah. Because at that point, yeah, we only had the monsters. Right. The unkillable, terrible monsters. Right. We didn't really have, like, a human... Like, I would say probably Leatherface being the most human, in yeah. a sense... And that's just because that was a tortured soul. Right. Being forced to do things they didn't want to do. Sure. So, like, yeah, that would be the probably the closest thing I could compare this to at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And even so, you still think of Leatherface as a monster. But yeah, and then when you get later on into the series, yeah. it becomes more of a yeah. monster. But in the beginning, the actual 74 original. Right. Let's yeah. see. Normal yeah. human no, being. Just being tortured by his own family. Um... I but I I liked that and it was it was a good change especially for this time like I feel like later on in the 90s you saw more of the psychological element added yeah. into horror movies but this was kind of a ahead of its time in that way mm -hmm. that it was um yeah you didn't see that especially in a slasher like I would still consider this a slasher mm -hmm. um but it just it wasn't it was cheesy but it wasn't cheesy in the way that you know, we're just going to try to show as many boobs and stabbings as right. possible. Um, where there was nudity in this, I feel like it was done for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it was very, um, it was very thought out. That's yeah. the one thing I can say is like, 
I forget what movie we were talking about last week, but I was like, they clearly just threw this out there. Like, it wasn't thought out at all. No. It was, let's just throw a slasher out there. This was, it was blood very. Rage. Uh, yes, Blood Rage. Mm -hmm. um, this was very intentional and thought out, and mm -hmm. there was a purpose behind it. And that's, I think, why I really love this because of it being ahead of its time in that way. Um, the only thing that I will say I did not like about this movie is the very end, how they set you up for a sequel. Mm -hmm. Like, that is the one that it was just over the line cheesy for me. Oh, I was yeah. Like, oh, come on. Like, that was actually my first eye roll of the movie. And usually any movie that came out before, like, the year 2000, I have multiple eye rolls happening oh, yeah. about this movie. But this one, I didn't really get any, except that last mm -hmm. little thing was like, dude, bro. It's like, cop out. Big time yeah. cop out. Yeah. That you didn't need that. Mm -hmm. You could have had a sequel without that. Oh, yeah. And when we, you know, get to that point, mm -hmm. you'll see why. Yeah. Like, it, they could have easily not done that yeah. with how the sequels played yeah. out. I thought that was dumb. Oh, absolutely agreed. Some of those kills were really good, though. Yeah. <laughs> and The visually, antlers through the chest, like, being hung up. Yeah. It, it was icky. It was and gross. And it was good. The gore was mm -hmm. very good Oh, it was movie. phenomenal. My favorite, by far, was the sledding scene. Yeah. Naughty! And, and the head, head comes bum, bum, rolling bum. down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and... and they didn't overuse gore in this. Like, no. things were gross, but it's not like buckets of blood. No. You know, that it was very uh, realistic because mm -hmm. most slasher movies, you, there is enough blood for, like, 16 bodies. Like, oh, and you yeah. only killed one person. Like, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this, I feel, was more realistic mm -hmm. in the way that, Absolutely. you know, the gore was used, which I feel like makes it scarier. Mm -hmm. When there's more, you see more flesh and more... Um, like what would actually happen to a body versus you know I cut my hand off and now there's you know three thousand people's blood yeah. squirting out and it's arm. geyser like right. no it would not be like, yeah no. it, yeah it just I I liked that I appreciated that oh, yeah. and I feel like that was not also something not of its time no not at all yeah this movie was definitely ahead of its time I'm excited to see what happens there's a uh, possible uh, reboot of the series coming next year. So I'm real fascinated to see if they can keep that element, this very right. human, like the things that we look at as the qualities of this film. Yeah. I'm curious if they will actually carry that over or if we're going to get the remake treatment. Yeah. You know, are we going to mm -hmm. just get a body count and lose the aspects of this film that we actually enjoyed and loved? Yeah. At point? I hope it's not another Halloween Kills situation I, for me. That'll always be a point of contention here. <laughs> Built up an entire year for the biggest heartbreak sitting in these chairs yeah well, it's okay though yeah we, we get we got a whole mess of other movies we can watch together and this is true it'll be just fine and next year we're gonna be right back here yeah doing it again yeah. <laughs> so if you have seen this movie let's talk about it a little bit more here in the comments below leave out the spoilers this round i know we started off the week you know go to town but there might be a few of you that have not actually seen this movie. Mm -hmm. um, so give them the opportunity to watch this. Again, there is a link in the description below. Save your spoilers for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email. Um, we are slashing through the snow. We've got our <laughs> Christmas-themed horror. So next week we're coming back with a couple more for you guys. And with that being said, scary later, YouTube.